What up? It's your boy T Bear and reaction today's film. Today was film five, but I'm late. It's like two. It's like literally one in the morning. Um, I had a lot to do, but I still want to get these reels out though. So we want to do the kill count in this week, and this week is a Alien Predator franchise week as well too. And we're continuing with the second Alien vs Predator movie. This is Alien vs Predator Requiem, which is a continuation for the previous Alien vs Predator as well too, with include the hybrid Alien Predator as well too. And there I've got the I don't know the exact the, the Alien Xenomorph, no the Predator Xenomorph. I don't know the, the technical name name of it, but we'll find out in the minute though. Other than that, without further ado, let's check out. The kill count of uh, of the Alien vs Predator Requiem. This came out in 2007. Let's get it. Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Aliens vs. Predator Requiem, released in 2007, three years after the first AVP. Although it takes place immediately after the first movie, Requiem is a very different film in a number of ways. Most significantly, it moves the story from the desolate Antarctica to a town in Middle America, just teeming with potential victims to die in this interstellar interspecies rivalry. And that's the other big difference. While the first AVP was disappointing tame when it came to kills, Requiem ups the gore and violence by a factor of 10, especially when it comes to the unrated version. Which, once again, I'll be using for this kill count because I just don't think these movies need full-on cut comparisons. Not like you could even see the differences if I showed them to you. It's great that the kills are a lot better than Alien vs. Predator, but it's tough to enjoy them when you can't see what the fuck is going on. This movie's dark as shit! That might have been a way to get all these gory kills past the censors. Let's find out how many they were trying to hide and get to them. The movie begins right where the last one left off, aboard the Predator spaceship on its way home from Earth. We all saw the last movie, so you know that Scar's body there is home to a nasty chestburster inside, and that chestburster grows up to be a cool looking Pred alien. Well, I mean, it would look cool if you could actually see it. Hey yo, other Predator cleaning bones and shit, could you turn on a light in your spaceship? Might help you see that Pred alien creeping up behind you. Hope oh, he did. And so is this Damn. other Predator we see getting killed in thermal vision. Damn, Pred Ooh. alien, you getting this party started right on time. Huh. A third predator misses with this plasma caster, and that damages the ship enough to send it crashing back to Earth, where Michigan like, high five! Sadly, this movie doesn't take place in Michigan, but rather Gunnison, Colorado, where this dad and his kid are hunting deer, both probably high out of their minds. Coloradans, right? They bear witness to the predator ship crashing in their woods, so they go and check it out. Whoa, dad, you think they got any munchies in there? Nah, just some gross-ass face huggers. And that ship for aim predator, who's lying there injured and sees the facehuggers escape. That predator, named Bull, I guess, makes a phone call on his doodad wrist before getting finished off by that crazy killer Pred alien, who's Pred starting alien. this movie with a triple kill. The escaped facehuggers prove to be equally effective when they quickly find the hunting father and son. One gets shot by the dad, Buddy, who then gets hit by the alien's acid blood, which mm. dissolves his fucking arm Ooh. off awesome. Then another facehugger hops on Pop, and the kid, Sam, ends up being equally unlucky. Oh! Sam wakes up to find dad buddy battling indigestion, and neither of them are able to escape the fate of some uh, uh, who kill them both with a bunch of oh, yeah, man, they killed the kid. Requiem ain't here to play, son. The I, you know how I feel about that. I guess I know. Yes, I know. That was a nightmare I'm streaming. It was kind of a bubble still, man. I'll have a heart for the kids. Team I love the kids. Stress signal from Bull makes its way back to this predator chilling in a fortress back home. And after seeing that this is a job for upper management, he suits up and arms himself to go take care of business. This predator is actually named Wolf, after Harvey Keitel's character in Pulp Fiction, who was also called upon to fix a nasty problem. Oh man, I shot Marvin in the face. Why the fuck did you do that? Oh and shit, is that the predator's home planet, Yaucha Prime, that he's taken off from? Show me more! The movie takes a break from the action to introduce some of the residents of Gunnison, Colorado. But honestly, neither AVP movie is strong when it comes to character depth, so let me just run through them real fast for you. Eddie Morales is the sheriff of Gunnison, oh, so okay. it's kind of ironic that he's good friends with Dallas Howard, who's a recently released convict. Also, how are you about to name another guy Dallas in your alien movie? This dude ain't no Tom mm. Skerritt. Dallas's younger brother is Ricky, standard name for younger bros, and he's got the hots for a chick named Jessie, who is literally nothing more than a sexy love
love interest. And standard for that role, she's also got a douchey boyfriend who's named Dale, who beats up Ricky with his friends because, you know, they're the bad guys. Oh, what? You want more characters? Okay, here's Kelly, a soldier returning home from Iraq to a husband who's been missing her and a kid who barely knows her. Aww. I want Dad to read it. Dad's been reading to you for the past two years, kid, and he can't even do funny voices like I can. The Pred Alien and his pals infiltrate this town's sewer system and, once inside, attack a pair of vagrants living there. One of mm. them, a dude named Harry. I wish this shit wasn't so dark so you could see the awesome practical effects here, once again done by ADI. For the face huggers, they used both animatronics and puppets to really great effect. Let us see your strong points, AVPR. Anyway, the vagrants fall victim to face huggers to beget more xenomorphs, while a lady down there is accosted for an all new procedure at the hands, or er, claws? Hands? Of the Pred Ooh. Alien, who, you know, still kinda hard to see there. Wolf gets dropped off on Earth by a spaceship that you know had its brake lights in working order, and after paying homage to the OG Preddy film by coming out the water all sparkly and shit, he finds his murdered brethren aboard the crashed ship. Removing Bull's helmet, he's able to watch a play-by-play -play recap and see what he's up against, and he ain't too happy about that abomination he's gonna have to hunt. After gearing up with even more weapons, including a dope-ass plasma caster, he heads out, making sure to destroy the ship behind him. Whoa, what happened to that thing? Did that just disappear? There's a search party going on in the woods for Buddy and Sam, and we see Wolf watching it and learning human words. But unlike in the first three Predator movies, nothing ever comes of this talent, and it's never brought up again. We do see Wolf use a blue juice, but it's not the same stuff from Predator 2 that the city hunter used to kind of heal himself or whatever. This stuff is instead some kind of ultra Windex cleaning solution that Wolf uses to dispose of the evidence that the Pred alien left behind, completely dissolving the bodies he finds. Way to clean up Mother Earth, Wolf, and it ain't even your mother. When Deputy Ray of the Search Party comes across Wolf, the Predator goes into predating mode and in no time at all, murders the young cop by stabbing him through the back with his wrist blade. Mm. Invisikill. Flawless. Victory. The next day, Eddie finds out that Ray never came home to his pregnant wife Carrie, so he goes out into the woods and finds the predator's prey strung up from a tree, stripped of his skin in classic Freddy fashion. Wolf is still hot on the Xenopred's trail, and down in the sewer, he comes across the remains of Harry and other guy, the vagrants who got face hugged and subsequently chest bursted to death. I'll also include that woman on the count now, since she'll have been bursted by this point too. It's a pretty messy situation, but nothing a little elbow grease and blue juice can't take care of. Wow, that stuff works wonders on calcium. But what about lime and rust? Deeper into the sewer tunnels, Wolf gets attacked by some xenomorphs. He kills one, which as you know by now, doesn't go on the kill count because it's a buggy ass xenomorph, and is about to open some whoop ass on another two when the Pred Alien shows up to save its half siblings. Mm. The warrior xenomorphs escape out of the sewer, as does the Pred Alien, leaving Wolf no choice but to follow them after he beep boops on this power punch glove. <laughs> yeah, it's a stupid name for a thing, but at least this extraterrestrial ass kicking is getting taken to the streets. It they wind up at so the diner dark. in which Carrie the Pregnant Widow works, and on her way out, when she hears a noise coming from the kitchen, she goes back there to find the cook Richie getting Ooh. his skull and spine ripped out by the Pred Alien, out of focus and in the extreme foreground. <laughs> <laughs> right, Carrie? I wish we got a better view of it, too. A warrior xenomorph arrives, and after blatantly ripping off the iconic shot from Alien 3, do you really think you earned that one, Requiem? It leaves Carrie, who smells like baby, to the Predalien leader. Cut away! Meanwhile, in this movie's boring human melodrama, Jesse told Ricky that she dumped Dale earlier that day, so now they're sneaking into the high school swimming pool, where Jesse can just, like, completely fulfill her character's role of being a hot girl to chase after. Mm -hmm. Fucking seriously, did the camera need to hold on those shots for that long, <laughs> or even at all? Dale shows up randomly with his beat-em-up buds, and Ricky knocks them all into the pool for a splishy-splashy romp around. Wolf chases a xenomorph to a power station, where it comes across a worker named Nate and plays another of the alien's greatest hits, the head bite. This time, oh, the hard hat. Oh. Wolf catches up to the xenomorph and shoots at it with his plasma caster, but he only manages to hit the surrounding power station and cause Damn. a giant blackout to go across this entire little mountain town. The blackout puts the Teen Boy Splash. Look, this movie's dark already, but not saying dark as in uh, uh, fucked up, dark as in dark looking. And the black guy will make it worse. Round on pause. And a xenomorph randomly hops into the pool to swim over to the boys like it's in resurrection. Oh, and this is why Dale always had two dudes with him for extra kills. The first of his bros, Mark, doesn't even make gotcha. it out of the pool. He instead gets head bitten through the back of the head. Of course. 
course the black one gotta be the one to get, get it first. And a kill that would be cool if it wasn't so goddamn dark. Dark! Pump up the game, movie! After the important characters escape the school through a window, the other toady, Nick, gets caught by the Xeno and pulled back into- Come here! A bloody kill. Later, the Xenomorph takes his body Ooh. and, uh, I guess starts to eat it, right? Is that eating? But mealtime is cut short after Wolf shows up and spears the alien Ooh. in the head, continuing his cleanup mission with a swimming pool full of blue juice soup. Damn, a little goes a long way with that stuff. The next Xenomorph sighting comes from Molly, daughter of that soldier lady, Kelly, who sees one through her window. It's alive, like me. Her parents think she's just making stuff up at first, but they become believers pretty quickly. See? No monster. Uh-oh. Oh, damn. Yep, that's a wrap on Kelly's damn. husband, Tim, who gets murdered by that xenomorph as his wife and daughter flee. Honestly, they didn't need to run away. It's not like they would have been able to see anything anyway. It's not bright enough. What the f***? The aliens score another kill for the Count after Darcy, widow of Buddy the One-Armed Hunter Man, comes to the town diner and finds Carrie dead in the kitchen. Mm. Looks like she's having triplets! So yeah, that's the Pred Aliens' whole deal. It can create multiple xenomorphs at once through this one trick it doesn't want predators to know about. Belly bursting. Sheriff Eddie and his ex-convict pal Dallas are checking out this tragic CGI fire at the power station when Ricky, Jesse, and Dale show up and tell them what they saw. Meanwhile, Kelly and Molly have run all the away from their house to this random cemetery, where a construction worker named Carl is also hiding, armed with a gun after having discovered his co-worker Nate's corpse. Wolf, who's tending to his wounds in a nearby tree, doesn't like the way Carl is waving that gun around all loosey-goosey, so he sets his laser sight on the dude's head and shoots it <laughs> fuck off with his plasma caster. Aw oh, man, Wolf, you shot Carl in the face. Did you mean to? Shut up, shut up, uh, James. No, the Carl reference from what Wolf did. Or did you hit a bump or something? <laughs> Kelly and Molly run away again, and even though Wolf sees them, eh, fuck it, I guess. Between the blackout and the, uh, you know, killer aliens running around, there's a huge traffic jam mm. preventing our heroes from getting out of town. Frightened widow Darcy stumbles into the gridlock and tells Sheriff Eddie about Carrie's oh. triple belly burst. So Dallas says they can't wait for the National Guard to show up and that they've got to defend themselves. They head to a sporting goods store and start taking all the guns but, like, I'm pretty sure you can't eminent domain firearms like that, Sheriff. And turns out, they didn't even need to wait that long because the National Guard is already here. And, mm -hmm. oh, fuck, man. This is gonna be a whole lot of kills for me to count, isn't it? Let's see. I count six confirmed kills. Ooh, either seen or heard gotcha. confirmed, including one that's a blatant ripoff of the Lost World Long Grass kills. Although there are other dudes there, shooting against the Xenomorphs as they make their funny elephant noises. Uh-huh. I won't put them on the count just based on conjecture, especially since they start yelling to fall back. Who knows, maybe they escaped, unlikely as that may be. Hungry to make some more triplets, the Pred Alien heads to a hospital and, I guess, follows the directory to the maternity ward, where it quickly murders a nurse uh! her by the neck and stabbing her with its tail. Yep, that'll do it. It finds a random pregnant lady and we see in full detail how it operates when it slips the expecting mother the tongue. Aw oh, man, the kids in grade school were right, you can get pregnant from French Kissing. At the gun store, the main characters. You know what? I feel like it's been a long time I said this with a kill count. Cool and the lady that I was pregnant in the diner, and just now. That was just fucked up. That's fucked up, yo. That is fucked up. That is fucked up. That is fucked up. Let's find a couple of future meatbags who admit that they're stoned. What are you guys, stoned? I grabbed some rifles. Wait, no, they just said they were stoned, dude. They're also joined by Kelly and Molly, so at least all these damn people will be in the same place from now on. Wolf attacks Dallas, but turns mm -hmm. out he just wanted to string him up as bait to lure out a xenomorph, which the Preddy makes short work of by half decapping it with his wrist blades. Everyone runs in and sees Wolf, but of course, the only two who get killed right now are those stoners we just met. When Ooh! Off by Wolf's plasma casters. See, this works. We can still root for Wolf because we didn't even know those two dudes. So, like, fuck them and their grieving families, right? And as okay as it would be, Wolf doesn't get to kill douchey Dale directly. Instead, while the other characters get away through the back, Dale gets attacked by a xenomorph. Ooh. And after Wolf shoots the bug with his cannon, the resulting blood rains down into the broy boyfriend's face and gives Ooh. him a gnarly death with melting eyeballs. We've come a long way from AVP's PG-13 rating, dude. At the hospital, a doctor comes into the maternity ward to find that one pregnant woman having already been belly bursted, and another right in the middle of the Process. Oh, 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 oh
ass is Fred Ailey fucked up. And did not budget for quadruplets, and it takes its stress out by head biting the. Oh! Does that make you feel better about your financial anxieties, Fred Alien? Yeah, I didn't think so. The human characters find what's left of the National Guard equipment, though, as they point out, there are no bodies in sight. Where the hell are the bodies? Nothing for me to count here. They rearm themselves and use a satellite phone to call the army, where a dude named Colonel Stevens answers and tells them they'll be sending an airlift to a rendezvous point in the center of town. Oh man, you can't trust the G-man when it comes to alien containment, y'all. On their way to the rendezvous, with Kelly driving the tank, their word, not mine, so don't comment telling me it's an APC or some shit. She comes to the same conclusion that I did. I think the colonel was lying. That's crazy. The government doesn't lie to people. Oh, sweet Darcy. Remember the main? Correctly assuming that the government will be trying to contain this mess, Kelly wants to head to the hospital so they can escape on their own in a helicopter. But Sheriff Eddie still has faith in law and the colonel's orders. A truck pulls up with other townies headed to the rendezvous, and our heroes break off into two groups. Darcy the Trustworthy joins Sheriff Eddie on the truck going to the center of town, while the other main characters head to the hospital along with this rando named Drew. I'm going to the tank. Maybe he's hoping the tank is going somewhere always sunny. The tank gets to the hospital, and inside, the group finds a bunch of bodies that I had to freeze frame and count. There are five that I see here, and yeah, they might just be cadavers or whatever, but I can't really tell what's going on, so I figured I might as well err on the side of overcounting rather than undercounting. Might get me yelled at a little less in the comments. Actually, you know what? This movie's exposure is bullshit. I'm sick of not being able to see what's happening. From now on, I'm throwing a filter over any footage where it's simply too dark to see. There, that's better. They head into the stairs well, where it looks like the Fred Alien is building a new hive. Gotta expand that creep somehow. On their way up to the roof, a xenomorph attacks that Drew guy to fulfill his red shirt destiny and get added to the count. Pretty predictable, but at least we get more of that elephant noise when they shoot the alien. I love that stupid noise, which was apparently captured by accident when someone recorded a peacock screech at the same time a baby elephant trumpeted. So thanks, Dumbo. Outside, Wolf has arrived at the hospital, and luckily, he has the keys for the place. Sort of. He ends up fighting the Pred Alien for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then a bunch of Xenomorphs, who he kills in a variety of ways. First, he plasma casts a head off, mm. then he dissolves one with his bottle of blue juice, Woo! and finally, he uses a freaking shuriken to Turn get off. a twofer. That shuriken attack actually gets him an accidental human kill, too, when it flies into Jesse, who was running ahead of oh! him. Her character only existed to be leered at and get killed. But hey, at least she went out with a pretty gruesome death, being totally... Hold on, they, what they said Jesse was? Go back. And finally, he uses a freaking shuriken to get himself a twofer. That shuriken attack actually gets him an accidental human kill too, when it flies into Jesse, who was running ahead of the rest of the group. Wow, her character only existed to be leered at and get killed. But mm. hey, at least she went out with a pretty gruesome death, being totally cut in high on. A xenomorph knocks Wolf into an elevator shaft, robbing Ricky of the revenge kill he wanted for Jesse. Mm, After he got his cool ass caster gun, the Pred Alien shows up oh! to impale him through the back with its tail. But then Dallas shoots at the hybrid XT and it runs away from them. Psh, you're 200% badass and you're running away from these punks? What gives? The humans make it to the roof where the helicopter is waiting for them. And since Dallas is rocking that predator pistol, he decides to hold off the swarming xenomorphs while telling the others to, you guessed it, get to the chopper. You know get to the chopper. To also, with all these damn bugs getting killed, I am once again glad that I don't have to include them on the kill count. Good rule past me. Because these xenos are getting killed left and right. Not only by Dallas with that alien handgun, but also by Ricky with a human handgun as he waits in the chopper for his brother. Then Wolf shows up to the party too, and he has a new party trick to show us. Peep this Castlevania whip that he uses to cut a xenomorph in two with. Oh! Dude, Dallas makes it to the helicopter, and the four surviving humans fly away, leaving Wolf and the Pred Alien to settle their score on the hospital rooftop. Now's a good time to commend the work of Ian White, who plays Wolf the Predator, and Thomas Woodruff Jr., who plays the Pred Alien. They give both these alien species so much character without any dialogue. It's all through their masterful movement, which is not easy in those big ass suits they're wearing. Like I mentioned last kill count, Thomas Woodruff Jr. has played various xenomorphs since Alien mm. 3, and Ian White not only played the Predators in both AVP movies, but also various characters from Game of Thrones, including mm. some White Walkers, the giant 1-1 one -one in seasons 5 and 6, and for a few episodes in season 2, the mountain that rides himself, Gregor freaking Clegane. The Predator and the Pred Alien and take turns beating on each other in a short little skirmish. Oh, so I'm curious how tall the dude is on um, AV, AVP record. I'm, I'm curious how tall he is. 
I'm just curious. I'm just totally curious how tall he is. And why? 7 1. Sheesh. Alright. But anyway, this is going. And what the Wolver Jr. 6 2. But then Wolf gets serious and takes off his mask so the two of them can square up and launch into an all out pretty That's fight. right. Props to Jeff Haberstad, the second unit director who filmed this fight, because it's pretty damn fun. Highlights include Wolf ripping out the Predalien's seed plant tongue, Wolf uppercutting his mm -hmm. opponent with his mm -hmm. wrist blades, and the Predalien stabbing Wolf through the back with its tail. Unfortunately, this kick-ass fight isn't gonna really matter in a second, cause, uh, well, remember all those people gathering in the middle of town for that evac the army told them was coming? Let's just say I had to do a lot of frame-by-framing on these overhead shots of them holding off bugs. Because, get this, dude, as Colonel Stevens watches on a monitor, a jet flies overhead. And yeah, they're actually fucking doing it, man. They actually drop a freaking nuke mm. on Gunnison, Colorado. In the last shot of the town, before it goes up, I can count 40 people standing there. So let's add 42 to the count right now. We've got 38 nameless townsfolk, whose genders I'm not even going to try to surmise. Damn. Sheriff Eddie Morales, Darcy, the Damn. patriotic hunting widow, <gasps> Wolf, the badass predator, and yes, the Predalien, who production nicknamed Chet for some reason. I'll count Chet because the Predalien is pretty unique, if not altogether humanoid. And yes, that means that I probably should have counted the hybrid newborn back in Resurrection. I'm sorry I didn't. But back to this movie, can you believe they freaking nuked this town? Like, mushroom cloud and everything, man. That is super fucked up. The survivors in the that helicopter is. got out just in the nick of time, because even though the blast catches up to them, they're able to survive their apparent helicopter crash, only to get surrounded by a bunch of army dudes in camouflage who come out of the woods. You bastards killed the entire town. Just following orders. Oh, maybe find a different way to word that argument. The army dudes promise the survivors that a medivac is coming. Yeah, stop me if you've heard this one before. And the movie ends with Colonel Stevens presenting the plasma pistol to a woman revealed to be Ms. Utani. Dun, dun, dun. Um. Time to get corporate merging, motherfuckers. We just watched a whole friggin' town get new. So I'm sure you're curious about the numbers. Let's get to them. What's that jet? What's what's that jet doing? Why is it coming towards us like that? What what's that jet? Oh, oh, well that's it's just a Blue Angel show. Oh, cool. I'm gonna go watch this. Nice. I counted 78 kills in AVPR, the final 42 all going together in a frickin' mushroom cloud. Between that and those cadavers, we had a whopping 42 human victims of unknown gender. Of the known kills, 23 were human males, 8 were human females, 4 were predators, and the last was the Predalien. Wow, what a pie chart, a 5 part pie chart. With the unrated version's runtime of 101 minutes, we had a kill on average every 1.29 minutes. Again, mostly thanks to that nuke. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Jesse. I hate the way this character is written, but you gotta admit, that's a cool fucking kill. Honorable mention to Dale's melty face though, mm -hmm. that was sick. Dol Machete for lamest kill can go to those bodies they found in the hospital. I don't like giving this award to kills like this, but honestly, most of the deaths in this movie were pretty dope. Were. And that's it. Aliens vs Predator Requiem came out in 2007, and although it was a financial success, it is the latest AVP movie to date. Maybe we'll see another one now that both these franchises are active again. But until we do, I'm James A. Janice. This has been the Kill Count. Thanks All a lot. Right, cool. There you have it. Um, Delian vs. Predator. Now we'll um I'm trying to remember which Predator movie. Where's Elliot? Which one's next? Um, let's see. Alien Predator movies in order. So we have, so in order. I'm glad I got this in order. So we then did, not not that order. Fuck. Not not that order. Not the that order. I meant the chronological order. Jesus Christ. Give me a minute. I, no. It's not what I'm looking for. All right, here we go. Release or There we go. Thank you. I'm like, what the fuck? Anyway, so we have the pre so Alien vs. Predator. So we'll we be checking out Predators that came out in 2010. And then following that will be Prometheus, the, the first prequel of the uh, Aliens. Then we have Aliens Covenant. Then we go with The Predator. And then we end it up with Capital with Prey. Well, other than that, though, this was pretty cool. 
cool little um see this out this stuff is more brutal than the uh the first alien first predator as well well other than that if you like my reaction like share subscribe my youtube channel it's your boy t-bird signing off one love